So with this, we move to the second uh, talk of the session. This is, uh, this is gonna be delivered by Professor Ricardo Farias and the title is Neutral Meson Properties in Hot and Magnetized Quark Matter. Ricardo? Okay, just a moment, I will share my screen. Oh, are you seeing my slides? Yes, please proceed. proceed. Okay. So, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for the invitation to show my results here. And that I have done in collaboration with different people in the last years. And I choose to show to the magnet field community some results that we are working in the last years. And about neutron meson behavior when you have a hot and magnetized quark matter. And I will address a, a part of my talk talking about, oops. this is the outline of my talk. I, believe, I will enjoy the beautiful motivation that Luis spent his precious time doing for me. Then I will enjoy that in my second place to talk. And I will be brief in motivation. And I will talk a little bit the thermomagnet effects on the coupling constant in NGL model. And I will spend part of my talk and doing a job about the importance of implementing a proper regularization procedure to treat thermo and magnet contributions when you have non renormalizable theories. And the second part, I will attend to the neutron mass on pole mass. Okay, all my our res our results to the pole mass of the pion, not the screening one. And I will show my, our results for NGL model, our recent results using, using linear signal model and some conclusions and perspectives. So as I said, I will enjoy the motivation that Luis has done, but we, we have some things that motivate us to work at fine magnet field. And we have strong magnet field and have ion collisions. We have beautiful effects like chiral magnet effect, but we do not have time to discuss about this here. And in a contest of stars, we have the magnetars and we have huge values of magnet fields in the surface and larger ones in, in stereo. And we believe that strong, really strong magnet fields play an important role in the physics of the early universe. So there is a, a, a huge motivation to put our hands on that. So talk about the fate of QCD phase transitions, especially in chirosymmetry restoration. And if you look for the lambda QCD, the scale of QCD to 200 MeV squared, it's around two times 10, 18 Gauss, you convert this in magnet field, so it's huge. And without prediction by models or by any kind of theory, the inverse magnetic catalyst was a beautiful phenomenon found on the lattice. We are living in times that lattice is founding phenomenon for us working how to explain theoretically. This is beautiful in my opinion. So we can get close to experimental, but we need to be closer to the LATS also. So the behavior that this appeared on the LATS was the behavior of the quark condensates changes when you increase the magnet field for large temperatures. We have in well explained in reviews by Igor and other authors, the magnetic catalyst at zero temperature, but at high temperature, all the kind of symmetry restoration transition temperatures, we have a reduction of the quark condensate. And there is a lot of papers trying to explain this mechanism properly. And we have an invited mini review about this, in this reference in this blue here, when I cannot talk about all the approaches. So I will restrict to the strategy that we have done in NGL model to try to explain IMC or try to be at least qualitatively with the LATS results. So, as I said, uh, we, we will talk about Nambuja and the model. In, uh, they have part of my talk. It's a quark model. It's good for kind of physics to work with pions. Do not have confinement. And of course, this is not QCD. There's a lot of arbitrariness. It's not normalizable. But we can have some insights and try at least to be qualitatively with the predictions that come from experimental or lots. So try to put our hands and try to be at least the quark, the freeze of freedom in KCD. 
So when you do the put the magnet field on the model, we have this covalent derivative d mu here, the usual way. Q capital Q is the quark matrix, the quark matrix of quark charges, and the magnet field is constant and homogeneous. And we have three parameters to determine in a model. That is the coupling constant G, the regularization parameter lambda, and the current quark mass. Usually, we fit these parameters here, adjust in the model to describe experimental values or estimatives for quark condensate, pi and decay constants, and pi mass. So usually, we work in mean field approximation for simplicity. This is the effective potential in the first line. This first term m square of 4G is the mean field term, and you have this one loop correction to the effective potential here. Today, we do some prescriptions to put the magnet field is more practical. And we, instead to have P, P square, we have PZ square or P3 square here plus two times the lambda level and quark in the quark charge and B. And we can see here when you do this prescription to the four dimension integrations, we have one DPZ integration in the three moment, and then you have here the dimension reduction appearing. So as I will talk uh, in more in, in few more slides, we have UV divergent terms and sitting on the effective potential and also in the gap equation that is partial F partial M that will be the equation that we will solve to address to, to evaluate the constituent quark masses. So the way that we choose a few years ago to try to put a IMC on the model, it's a old game. There are a lot of papers that try to address the coupling constants in different models. So we do the backwards. We ask what will be the coupling constant in NGL model that describe the IMC or that describe the behavior of the quark condensates when you have fine temperature in the magnet field. Left plot, we have the usual. Then we have magnet catalysis. The condensate always increase with an increase the magnet field when you change temperature. And the right hand plot is a fit that you have done in NGL model to, to try to implement IMC in the game. And the LATSI results show a decreasing for the physical biomass 140 MeV. We have a decreasing of the critical temperature against B. And the right hand plot, we have different quantities is that you look for, determine the pseudo critical temperature against the B. One main thing that I would like to call the attention here is that we can describe IMC, you can include IMC in NGL model including thermal and magnet effects. So this is, there are a lot of works putting only magnet contributions on the coupling. And in my opinion, a fair game is include thermal and magnet effects. Because if you go to QCD, for example, and alpha S, you do a calculation, one loop calculation for alpha of QCD, the dependence on B, the dependence on T are, are considerable to, I guess we cannot neglect any one of them. So, Okay, but as I said three slides ago, when you work with NGL model, we have UV divergent terms to treat there. So which procedure is more appropriate? Is there any criteria? So we have chose one idea that's the following, that is simple. The UV divergent terms appear in the vacuum. So if you need to regularize, we need to regularize the vacuum part of the, of the, of the model. So, we try with the all force that we have to disentangle medium effects or mother effects, as we can call, temperature effects, density effects, magnetic field effects from the vacuum terms. So, and the, the medium terms that are finite, we do the integration to infinity. We save this step on both limit. And I will try to convince you that to describe the behavior of the quark condensates found on the lattice, we need to avoid do regulators in these medium terms. So that we call magnetic field independent regularization. This is, was done by Eber and Klimenko in 2003, uh, apply in for SU2 NGL model in 2009. In the context of color superconducting phases, Cochlear has done a good job in 2015 when this MFIR name appeared, if I'm not wrong. And we apply in different contexts since that. So just have a look for the gap equation. That is the first equation here. That's the equation that comes during the derivative of the effective potential respect to the mass. 
So we take this one and try to disentangle the pure magnet contributions from the vacuum because it's all mixture in the first equation. So just add and subtract a usual vacuum of the model. And we can see that you have this I1 is the usual model in the vacuum. And this IF, we have these contributions that depends on B, that's one that was subtracted. You can handle this analytically and you have a builder expression for this IF. And the end of the day, you have the usual gap equation with the regulator seeding in the vacuum piece, plus this pure magnet term that is finite if I do the integration to infinity. So how you can try to do that UV integration there? So you can find many works when, when the procedure was just plug a form factor and this form factor contains dependence on the Landau levels and the magnet field. And the, four, the, the shape of this form factor can be different shapes, can be Lorentzian one and with Saxon one and fermi girica one. In the non-convariant procedures, you can use the bell, bell user 3D sharp cutoff. So then of course, here I will start showing some numerics. If you look, these blue bands are just three, between three values of the quark condensate. But if you do not disentangle the magnet part, the left-hand side, you can see some oscillations here. And this is zero temperature, zero density. There is no Vasden-Halfel oscillations in this problem. So these oscillations, in our opinion, appear because you are putting in the regulator this dependence of the lambda levels here that, in our opinion, cannot be there. So the right-hand plot is if we use form factor, the, the, the choose of the regularization prescription is a, in some sense a, the definition of an NGL model. But in our opinion, you need to do this on the vacuum. So if you compare this book data points here are the lattice data for the, quark, for the average of the quark condensate. If you do the separation, we remove these oscillations. And if you change the shape of the form factor, the, the, these non-physical oscillations is more dramatic. Look at the left hand. And you have beautiful results on the right hand plot if you put this form factor only in the vacuum piece, right? And treat the medium, the pure magnetic contributions as finite and do the integration in all the momenta. So this is the result for the cutoff 3D doing the separation of the pure magnetic contributions. The result is good compared to the lattice. And in that paper, we include also covariant ones. So we have results for the four D sharp cutoff proper time in polyvillers. And we have done a complete analysis on that with all different possible methods. These are the results for four D cutoff. And for the proper time is a little bit of the data, but uh, we try to push in down playing a game with the parameterization. But if you try to go in down the quark condensate, if you look it's 220 here, so it will be low values, but the shape is not bad. There is no oscillations here. The polyvirals, they are another beautiful regularization procedure that gave a good jobs. So we are not saying which procedure is better than another one. We are only saying that the shape that comes from the lapse is well described by different regularization procedures if you disentangle the pure magnetic contributions from the vacuum. So this was the first part of my talk. So the second part now, I will dedicate to meson masses. So the, specifically the pole mass for neutral mesons. This is a topic that there are a lot of people working on that, especially for another case that is charged ones, but I will focus our results for the neutron pion masses. masses. I will start showing um, a short review when we have access to the lattice for the pion mass calculation since 2013 with this Zidaka paper. And if you look at these data points here, are the first prediction for the neutron pion mass on the lattice. And you have a decreasing for some, after some value of the magnet field, the pion mass is start increasing. And this solid line is a, a an uh, interesting paper doing for Avancini, Tavares, and Marcos Pinto, and they do the calculation of the pi mass using an expansion in lambda levels for the quark for the propagators and doing the 
mass, the gap equation and the polarization function calculations in MFIR, disentangling these pure magnet contributions, and the result is a solid light, right? It was 2016. Um, the next last results published in the continuum limit that appears is this one from Bali and Roden collaborators. And we are focused on these blue curves here. And if you see, we have a, a, a change in the behavior of the shape of the neutron pion mass against the magnetic field. We cannot, we, we, we do not see more that increasing that appear in the first LATSI data. So there are some LATSI techniques here with Wilson Fermions, I'm not a LATSI guy, but the shape will change a lot compared with the first one. And recently appear in 2020, a Chinese collaboration that for pi zero, look, we have again this decreasing and no more increasing again. So the people in the LATS, I guess, are, the LATS guys can talk about this in the discussions, but I guess they agree now that the pi mass decrease and do not start increasing for these values of the magnetic field. This is the shape that you need to find in our model calculations. In NJL is a whole problem that you can evaluate the T matrix of scattering of power of quarks, solving the batch salpeter equation. In the end of the day, we are doing random phase approximation, for example. And you have this effective vertex of pi on quark quark. And this series can be summed and the result is this one minus this bubble in the denominator. So we can use this, this meson propagator one of k square plus and pi square. In the end of the day, we solve this equation here and we will determine for external moment equal to pi on mass, pi zero mass square, the, the mass pole of the pi. On. And we have done this in MFIR approach like that Marcus Tavares and Sidney approach. And, but here at zero temperature, we dress the coupling in NJL asking what is the coupling that describe the average of the quark condensates on the lattice. The red line is the NJL result, and the blue line is the result that you have when we force the NJL to describe the quark condensates. This G decrease with B. And when you come back to the pion calculation, the result is this blue line. So this blue line is the result coming from the lattice with this decreasing of the pion mass, and that red line is the fixed coupling, okay? that start increasing after some value of the magnet field. So, as I said, I have proposed to you for this talk, a calculation of the pi on mass, neutron pi on mass, in two different models of, Q, effective models of QCD. A non-normalizable with some arbitrariness than the NJL, but now we start a good collab I started a good collaboration with my Mexican guys, Alejandro, Luis, Jose Luis, and Renato from Chile. And I will enjoy the beautiful motivation and in the description of linear sigma model has, that we have done a few minutes ago. And I will just mention that this is the Lagrangian density of the linear sigma model. And we have two coupling constants here that will work. That is the boson self-coupling lambda. And this G, that's the, caustic, the coupling constant between fermions and bosons. So we have a, put on archives recently a, a, a manuscript that do the calculation of the dressing of these couplings at strong magnet field. Luis has shown before in his analysis a weak magnet field procedure. And here we do the calculation for the strong B regime. In this tactical limit to evaluate this triangle once, so this fish diagram here on the left will dress the boson self-coupling. And this triangle ones here will dress the G that will be the boson fermion coupling constant. So the result for the boson self-coupling is this one. We are, we are looking now for the neutron pi mass at strong magnet field. So the behavior is this, this diamonds here below. If you, the scale here needs to be more careful because it's a modest decreasing of lambda with B. And for the boson fermion coupling constant, here is the two curve for two values of sigma mass. And we have again a modest decreasing of G against B in the strong field limit. 
So here is our result that we try we try to put on archives to you for today, but you'll be here tomorrow. And this is the MB, M capital B on the on the, on the axis here, is the biomass, neutron biomass evaluated in the linear sigma model. And we have two curves, the blue and black one. The blue is the usual, the usual linear sigma model with fixed couplings. And if you see, we can see that increasing of the pile mass here for some value of the magnet field. But the beautiful result that appeared in our opinion is the black one. In the black one, we have that shape that found on the recent last results for the pile mass. We increase the magnet field and here we have a renormalizable model. So we, in NJL model there, we are we need to work until a magnet field is proportional to Blumby square. This is to be like dot five, dot four GV square. Here in linear sigma model, we do not have this limitation. So you can extrapolate for large magnetic fields as Latsy has done in simulations and the result is this black curve. Another thing that Latsy bring to us is if you change the value of the biomass in the vacuum, so if you look for the red, the pink, and the blue curves, if you increase the biomass, the, this curve's moving up. And you play a game in the numerics in the linear sigma model, and when you dress the couplings, and this, this is for another value of the pions, it's for the physical 140, 220, and 415. And you have the same behavior. This is another thing that we claim that this thermal magnet effects on the coupling constants is helping a lot to describe the, mes the neutron meson masses. Ricardo, five minutes. All right, I'm almost finished. So here we have the linear sigma model curve for the neutron pion mass again. So here, this Bali and draw the results, they use 415 MeV for the pion mass. And if you see this blue, diamonds here are the PD and the red ones are PU. The lattice separate the contributions of UU bar and DD bar. And our black dots here are the average between them, right? So if you see, we, we use the same value of the pi on mass in the vacuum that Lats has used in the simulations and the result is quite amazing when you put these uh, thermomagnet effects on the coupling constants in linear sigma model. So, all right, but if you change now, let's go to the another LATS collaboration from China that is very recent. And they use 220 MeV for the biomass. And if you see our results fall between the PU and PD found in this very recent reference that appeared in archives. So another thing that I would like to call your attention, everything that I talked until now was zero temperature, right? So now I would like to talk a little bit only in NJL, in, in linear sigma model, it will be more, we need to work a little bit more. And one thing that called our attention in, in the past, in 2020 was this result. Because if you look at the three lines that for three different values of the magnet field, but you have some tachyonic instability on the pion mass at fine temperature. And if you see for this curve and you come back, if you see the regulator contains this lambda level in magnet field depends on that. So this is the motivation that I spend half part of my talk talk about the regulators disentangle the magnet part from the vacuum. And we, after MFIR approach, we do not have any more tachyonic instabilities. But this result stay in our hands more than a year trying to explain this physically. And for me, we need deserve more attention. And especially in the discussion section, I would like to see the opinion of the, the other guys on that. And we try a lot numerically to see if it's a numerical problem or not. And no, there is a jump on the mod temperature when we plot the biomass, neutron biomass against the temperature. We are believing that is due to the dimension reduction. We have less possible QQ body states assess due to the, star, due to the strong magnetic field. So, but 
Another collaborate, another papers appear and and, all, and recently appear one doing the calculation for the screening and pole mass, and they have found results that agree well with, with our results. And if you increase the magnet field, this jump is larger, right? So T mod increase with B in MFIR approach. And if you plug thermal and magnet effects, we have a dec IMC on T mod. But I don't have time to discuss all this today because I only have 25 minutes. And this T mod here is, is different from the Cairo symmetry temperature restoration temperature, is different from TC for Cairo symmetry restoration. Is the temperature when the pion will start to be decaying, right? It's entering in a resonance state, it appears when the pion mass is equal to the two times the constituent quark mass. In the T mod, we have this jump, right? So, my conclusions. We are using lattice simulations in the presence of intense magnet fields as a benchmark platform to compare different regularization procedures in NJR. All right? So let's see, it's an ingredient that we are trying to use to be the models more viable, let's say. Okay, and it's clear for our results that MFIR scheme avoid these unphysical oscillations because if you don't do this disentanglement and attack a problem and find density, for example, there you have vast and half oscillations. And how you will differentiate between these oscillations that comes from the regulator and the, the, you, the really vast and half oscillations there. So we believe that if you disentangle the pure magnetic contributions from the vacuum, it's an important ingredient to take into account, right? So at the zero temperature, we have shown that meson masses evaluate in NGL for the limit of magnet field that NGL can be applied in. And the linear sigma model are in agreement with the lattice when we have magnetic effects and the coupling constants. So the mod says to temperature is catalyzed with increase of B. And these two last sentences, it's about this more energetic resonance that we have obtained when we increase the magnet field. So we have this jump and the P pi zero mass that happens in the dissociation temperature. And we believe that is a direct result from dimension reduction. And I will appreciate in the discussions if you, we can put our hands and discuss a possible physics behind this. So my perspectives, it's a lot of thing to do. The thermomagnet effects in linear sigma model will be a, a beautiful problem to treat soon if you can because I would like to see using a renormalizable model if this jump anti mod persists. Because there are some results from Norberto Scopola, for example, and other guys doing the screening mass calculation. And there, with other models, they do not have found this jump there. So I would like to see if it's some model details, if there are physics behind this. And of course, after the neutral one, the charge mesons in this buff of these models will be um, another work to do because we have other model predictions and you have lots of results to compare and try to do as much we can upgrade in effective models to be more realistic in the end of the day. So thank you so much for your attention. Thank you, Ricardo. Um, I see that there is a vivid discussion in, uh, in the chat uh, don't see any particular question addressed to the speaker, but uh, I see a couple of raised questions. Uh, first, Vivian, uh, do you want to speak? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Uh, uh, Ricardo, very interesting result. Uh, actually, I, I agree with the philosophy of uh, your um, presentation that the effect of uh, changing the coupling constant with magnetic field and temperature uh, is the way to go. I understand that and I totally agree. But I have a question related to uh, the beginning of the discussion you had, the beginning of the presentation, when you said that in order to isolate, to be, be able to find, regularize the, the theory, you added and subtracted a uh, couple of terms. I mean, added and subtracted, uh, I guess, a vacuum term without magnetic field. That, that's yeah. how I understood it. It's right. Is that right? Yes. Okay, and that vacuum term had certain regularization. Yes. Okay, so but the first thing is you added and subtracted something that was already regularized, right? Because mm -hmm. it has to be finite in order to do that. 
but when you combine this subtract one with the original expression that depends on b if you do a power count is finite it's it's very similar to the procedure that people do in Pauli Villers. You will add and subtract terms, and that will act in the high momentum. But if you are you seeing my slides? Yeah, I see. So this this for this term here is UV divergent. When you add and subtract this I1 here, this I1 that you'll be sitting here, if you kill this last term, you'll be the usual NJL model. But this IF that is defined in the first line here is the original with B and in, in, in the, if you just, just this first line is UV diver. But when yeah, you but do you the- have to subtract, I'm sorry, but you have to add and subtract something that is fine. So whatever you do, you have to use something that is already regularized with some approach. So that okay. was my first question. Okay, formally you are saying you cannot add and subtract an infinite. Exactly, totally that's what I'm saying. Okay, but I'm saying that you, you, you add and subtract this one. But my question is in the second one here, when you combine with this one, and if you plot the integral, you can see that it's totally finite. So in such a yeah. way, you can remove the regulator from there. Well, I, I, I would say I would feel more comfortable if you tell me uh, I add and subtract a term that it's infinite, but I, it, I, what I did is I regularized it. I used some regularization and I had some, and subtract that term. And then combine that with using the same type of regularization in the uh, magnetic field term, I proved that uh, my result does not depend on the regularization. I did it with this and that. That's how I would say I would see this. Uh, I would understand this. The way you are saying doesn't seem to be like that. And for me, that it's is like a... If I may, perhaps we, we, we could uh, postpone this discussion. This is actually a very interesting point. I just wanted to add that perhaps a better way of understanding this procedure is that what you do is you add and subtract the limit when B goes to zero of uh, on one and the other expressions. So in that sense, I think that it is easier to understand what Ricardo is trying to convey. But nevertheless, let's uh, postpone this discussion. It's actually a very interesting point. Uh, for the discussion session. Yeah, uh, unless we don't have any other question, we can uh, give a chance to uh, Chowdhury to, 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 uh, to uh, post a very brief question, please. Yeah, so uh, I have a question related to this uh, uh, neutral pion mass uh, plot. So uh, I'm just Which curious one to know. Yeah, the LSM, LSM one. Yeah, so I'm just curious to know why uh, why your uh, magnetic field plot is, I mean, truncated after uh, below this 0 0.5, roughly 0 0.5 GeV square. Is there any particular reason? Because we are working a strong field limit. This is a LLL calculation. We cannot go in down in B, right? Oh, so so this is uh, this is not for arbitrary Landau level. No, 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 no. This is the calculation was done in strong field case. Sorry if I. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry, I, I didn't get that. So, okay. oh, sorry. That's fine. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you very much. I don't see any more raised uh, hands. So, let's uh, thank Ricardo uh, again and let's move.